Coming to you live from his padded cell high atop Bethel Church, the most heralded, the most despised talk show in all of human history. This is the talk show Hell Hates. This is Pastor Mike Online. Coming to you live from a top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52. Ooh, almost got you that time. This is the talk show Hell Hates. The more you listen, the more you know why. I'm going to pick back up again where I left off Yes Tour Day, Woden's Day, 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 Day. Uh, dealing with the esteemed Dr. Stephen Greer and his Jesuit partner, Daniel Sheehan, as they calmly meditate, or maybe they're just trying to wipe a booger off their finger or something like that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I do. It's um, certain, the way they do their fingers is certain symbols. And it means, I forgot what all it means, but it's called a mudra. And the way you hold your fingers during your meditation determines, I don't know what God you're going to get. I don't know. Do you dial them up with your fingers, I guess? I don't know. Something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, some, some new um, interesting things have shown up. Donna, the software writer. Uh, contacted me the other day about a new number that's popping up in association with the Novel Coronavirus 33. If you remember that, where I, I did the Pastor Mike Online dealing with Virus 33, um, and then yesterday we were, we were talking about the serpents. But anyway, there's a, another number showing up, and it's 77. Now, to give you just a, a tad bit of revelation on the number 77, if you go to Genesis 4, um, God put a mark on Cain, and it was so that nobody would kill him. Cain knew that he would be a vagabond in the earth, and... Um, the Lord said unto him, Theresoever, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So then Cain goes out from the presence of the Lord. That's a terrible place to go to. From the presence of the Lord. I don't ever, I don't ever want to go there. I don't want to be turned over to a reprobate mind. I've told God that multitudes of times. God, please don't turn me over. God, don't, don't cause me to fall into heresy or anything. I don't, my soul means more to me than anything. And there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. But anyway, what, by the time we get to Lamech, who, if you count, we, we know that Enoch was the seventh from Adam through Seth's line. So we go Adam, Cain, he bare Enoch. Enoch begat Irad. Irad begat Mahujael. Mahujael begat Methusael. Methusael begat Lamech. Lamech is number seven. He is sort of the opposite of Enoch. And so Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, or a former a, a pastor that I had. Uh, when I was growing up here at Bethel Church, he was from North Carolina, and he had a North Carolina accent. And uh, it wasn't Ada, it was Ader. Ader and Ziller. Anyway, Ada bare Jabal. But look at what Lamech said unto his wives. Ada and Zilla, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. And he's bragging about it. And he says, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And he's, he's boasting about killing somebody. And if Cain would be avenged, I would be avenged seventy and sevenfold. Seventy-seven times. So that number keeps 
showing up. If you type in COVID virus or coronavirus 77, you're going to get headlines all over the place. So I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And a, and a possibility, a possibility of what could be what spiritual force is behind the virus. And, and there's some new information out now about the physical source of the virus. And it doesn't look like it's from the seafood market in Wuhan, where they serve bats and blah, stuff. Anyway, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, Stephen Greer's contacting aliens, UFOs, and they show up. Uh, I mentioned the iTunes extras that I got for buying the video. Um, you get uh, about an hour, 10 minutes of Daniel Sheehan's full interview. You get about two hours of Stephen Greer's full interview. And then you get 30 minutes of UFO videos that were taken by CE5 encounters. In other words, when these people would go out to the desert or the mountainside or they would go out to the beach and they would meditate and they would chant their mantras and they would make ET phone calls, then these ETs would show up and they would film them, photograph them and different things like that. I, I featured one of these videos several times where Greer was out at a beach with some people and the dials up ET and sure enough, this amber orb uh, shows up out over the ocean and then another one joins in with it and they're being videotaped and everybody's going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. They have no discernment whatsoever. No discernment. They don't understand what these things are. They think that they are an advanced race that's come here to help us evolve to our next level so we can bring in the new world order and that's not that's not good god basically says that that whole thing is a punishment it's his wrath for not believing the gospel for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie because they they love not the truth they didn't want to hear the truth they didn't want to hear the gospel of salvation so they rejected it and they exchanged it for all of this stuff here. Um, so anyway, I showed you um, yesterday that picture, um, which an actual photograph, it was taken at night, meaning it was dark. But this creature manifested itself. And they were able to get a photograph of it and notice the shape of the head triangular shaped head what does that tell you and and i was always told that's a poisonous snake you stay away from them so we started looking at the uh the nature of the serpent yesterday and there's something i want to point out today something that occurred to me today and, and again no matter how many times you read a verse out of the bible you're always going to get something new out of it. If you meditate on it, if you think on these, think Bible. Meditate on the Word of God. Stuff will just occur to you that you never thought of before. But I want to point out something to you. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now here's the question. Was Satan really unsure of what God said? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he knew exactly what God said. I think he knew it. And let me keep reading. Uh, the, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. We know that was an addition on Eve's part. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, here's another part of that is, 
Did the devil actually believe that it was possible that Eve wouldn't die if she ate of that fruit? I don't think so. The Bible says that the devil, Jesus said it. He's the father of lies. He was a liar. He's a murderer from the beginning. He's a liar and the father of all lies. He, I believe, that he knew he was lying through his fangs. I believe he knew it. I think when he said, ye shall not surely die, I think he knows it was a lie. Then he said, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And I think he really knew that he was lying to Eve. He didn't believe it. Didn't matter. He doesn't have to believe it. He doesn't have to believe his own lies. All he has to do is make sure that Eve believes his lies. That's all that matters. Because God's not hinging man's salvation on whether or not the devil obeys God. Man's salvation here in the garden was if man did what God told him to do, and that is he may eat of all the trees freely, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the day that he eats thereof, then he shall surely die. And that was it. It's all man had to do was just not eat that one fruit. That's it. And I think the devil knew what God said. I think he knew that what he was saying was a lie. And here's my point in this. Here's why I'm saying this. You know, I, I mentioned this about the virus the other day. Hydrochloroquine is the medicine. I take it under the form of malarone. If I go to Kenya, I go to my doctor and say, I'm going to Kenya. Can I get a, a script for malarone? And he'll write me out a script. We'll take it several days before we go to Kenya, get it in our system. It's a preventative. Then if we get out to Kenya and we are bit by a malarial mosquito and the malaria virus is in us, the hydrochloroquine in it, in the malarone, will more than likely, it's not that I won't get any symptoms or I won't get any flu symptoms. It's just that it significantly reduces the effect that those symptoms have. Okay? Um, and there was a... Um, I can't remember who she was, but she sat with Trump yesterday or the day before yesterday and she's a Democrat. And she went to the White House to say thank you to the President for putting her on to the idea of hydrochloroquine because she said she had the coronavirus and thought she was going to die. And within 24 to 48 hours of, of her starting to take hydrochloroquine, she snapped right out of it. And she said, I didn't know that just saying thank you to the president would cause such a political uproar. Because she's a Democrat. You're not supposed to. She went against the party line. The party line is Trump doesn't know what he's talking about. And I, and I want you to grasp this idea, people, that the liberal Democrats in this country, they say they're on the side of life. They're not. They are all, ab any group of people who will sacrifice millions of innocent babies is not on the side of life. I guarantee you. They're not on the side of life. They're not on the side of human rights. Because what about the rights that those baby humans have to be born and to live? They don't even give them the benefit even if the abortion is botched and they live through the abortion. The Democrats want to go ahead and proceed in killing a living human being for crying out loud. I get worked up over that issue. 
It's murder. And anybody who anybody who runs on a ticket of I'm pro-abortion, they're murderers. Let me read this scripture to you. Romans 1 basically says it in no uncertain terms. If you're not going to listen to me, you better listen to God. Because he gives a list of things here. Even, verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. There it is. Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. That's 99.9% .9 of your liberals hate God. And I mean hate our God. Now, Buddha and Allah, oh, they love Allah. But they hate the God of the Bible. Thus, they hate God. They say they're about religious equality. No, they're not. They hate the Christian God. And I would say for the, and this is, I don't get this. Most liberal Democrats in this country despise the nation of Israel. And I don't understand why American Jews, for the most part, end up being liberal Democrats. I don't get that. It's like a form of genocide to side with the very people who would send money to Syria, Iran, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, and ISIS, whose stated goal is to destroy the state of Israel. And I just, I don't get it. But your, your average liberal in this country is pro-murder and a hater of God. Period. Um, and it says in verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. When you support and are on the side of people who are pro-murder and haters of God, when you vote for them, you are on, you are siding with them on that. I mean, I just, I don't get it. But anyway, I, I truly believe the devil knew what was going to be the result of Eve eating from that fruit. I don't think he believed that she would be a god like he is. He's the god of this world. I don't think, I don't think he believed that. I think he knew that it would bring death to her, which is why he wanted her to eat it. He wanted her dead. And it staggers my mind. I, I just, I cannot comprehend how politicians in this country would rather see thousands of people die by this China Wuhan virus rather than allowing them to have access to the one medication that we know can severely inhibit the symptoms of the Chinese Wuhan virus. Why would the, why would the governor of the state of Nevada issue a death warrant in the form of an, an executive order saying that he's forbidding any doctor in the state of Nevada from prescribing hydrochloroquine or malarone to anybody with the coronavirus. We, and he's doing it, he's, sounds noble. We're, we must protect the lives of those who need this medicine. Well, the people who need the medicine are the people who have the virus. Yeah, yeah I am feeling better today. And a little worked up is an understatement. Um... So we looked at the end game. 
the purpose of his deception was to bring in the other Jesus, the other spirit, and the other gospel. And Paul was very, um, was dead on to point out that it's not another gospel. We, we covered in last night's Bible study, we're looking at the gospel according to the scriptures. And the word gospel literally means good tidings of great joy, means good news, a good sentence. Is what is the literal interpretation of the word gospel. It's where we get the word from. And um, Paul was dead on when he said, it's not another gospel. It's not good news to tell people that they have to work to earn merit with God, that they have to perform, that they have to do some sort of ritual or whatever, pay a certain amount of money or turn over your farm to the Catholic priest or whatever because your loved one's in purgatory and we, we, we church hold the power to pray them out of purgatory, but it's going to cost you. How evil is that? How evil is that for a Catholic priest who tells you, I have the power to bring your dead loved one out of purgatory, but I'm not doing it unless you pay. How evil is that? That's just, that's beyond wicked. There are lost people who don't treat people that way. There are lost people who've got more morality and more fellow brotherly love than your Catholic priest who insists on a large donation or hand over your herds, hand over your flocks, hand over your inheritance. I want some money here. I better see the cash roll in or I'm not praying the prayer that'll get your loved one out of purgatory. How evil is that? Maybe I should have stayed home today. No, I don't think so. Um... So we, we, uh, Genesis 3, 15, the seed, thy seed is the basis for the other spirit, the other Jesus, and the other gospel. So we talked a little bit about the serpent yesterday, uh, Aaron's rod that uh, swallowed up the other serpents of Pharaoh. Uh, we covered that. Uh, we looked at uh, Numbers 21, and I'm trying to move through some of this so that I don't just reiterate what I said yesterday. Um, but getting to um, the fiery flying serpents. Let me go back to Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let me go back to Numbers, Numbers 21. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way and the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. The Lord sent fiery serpents. Let me underline that for you. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So here you have, to my knowledge, the first ever photograph of a fiery flying serpent. I looked at this and I'm just going, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. There it is. And as I mentioned yesterday, this is sort of where we left off. Greer said during the recording of this documentary that the, I think this was a woman, that when this, when this serpent, this cosmic serpent, this, I mean, think about it. Really? You have a, a, an advanced extraterrestrial race that according to Greer, now, Dr. Stephen Greer, comes to us by way of some planet 
in some far distant galaxy, billions of light years away, and they just happen to evolve to look exactly like a species of animal that we have on this planet, serpents. Are you kidding me? That somehow, some way, the universe decided that all of the creatures across the entire universe, no matter what planet they came from, were all going to look alike. So we have, according to Dr. Greer, an alien visitation to this meeting, this CE5 meeting that he's having. And these aliens come from some distant galaxy, some star cluster, some planet somewhere in a ship, and they just happen to look like snakes. Just happen to have evolved to look like snakes. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe, you know, you ever played with Play-Doh? What's the easiest thing in the world to make with Play-Doh? Snakes! You just go, roll them like that. So maybe, maybe that's, the universe is going, well, they're easy to make. That's why they're snakes. <laughs> what you're looking at is the, the proof. The Bible was right the whole time. These are devils. And this person experienced Kundalini. And Kundalini is based upon um, Eastern mysticism. It is the feminine spirit. And anytime you have a feminine spirit, you're dealing with one thing only. Doesn't matter whether her name is Ashtaroth, that's the Old Testament, or Diana. That's the New Testament. Her name is Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's the opposite to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals things, opens up for us our understanding, shows us things to come. That's what Jesus said, gives us comfort. But a kundalini experience, when the Holy Ghost comes on us, it causes us to be sober, not drunk. Um, Stan Johnson of the Club O Prophecy uh, wanted to give me a drunken spirit. He said he wanted to, him and his wife were talking while I was I was had given a talk on the Da Vinci Code back in, I think, in 04. And he heard me mention about the cup of devils and about being sober. And Stan and his wife looked at each other and said, obviously, he's never been drunk in the Holy Spirit. Ha, ha, ha. And I went, you're right. And he said, I can give you an impartation of that if you want. I said, no, thank you. Don't touch me. I didn't want anything to do with that. Not a thing. I remember being in his office in Topeka, Kansas. And this is after he told me he wanted to give me an impartation. And we were talking. I was sitting. He was sitting at his desk and behind his desk. And I was sitting in the front of his desk in a chair. And I am not kidding you. As he's talking to me about how he gives impartations to people, laying hands on them and so on. I literally could perceive a barrier in that room between he and I. And I have never felt that as strong as I felt it that day. There was a, it was, and I said to him, I don't know if you are getting this or not, but I said, there is a barrier in this room between you and I. And I said, it is obvious to me that God has placed it there 
and I, you know, I was being nice to him, and I said, you know, obviously, what you think you have, God doesn't want me to have. Now, for whatever reason, but it was this, I mean, it was just like there was, it's like angels had built a brick wall between me and Stan Johnson in his office that day. And I'm just, I'm just going, and I'm thankful for that because there's no way I want a drunken spirit on me. No way. But that's what Kundalini gives you. It takes away the sobriety of your mind, giving you an ecstatic experience. When people go in for these new church services, instead of just singing the hymns and the spiritual songs, they're looking for an experience. They're wanting a release of emotions in them. They want a frenzy. They want, they want, uh, they, they want to, it's like getting high. They want to get high and they want that rush of emotions to come through them. And that somehow says to them that God favors them because he released these emotions in them. My friends, I'm here to tell you that the truth of the word of God is not hinged on whether or not you feel emotions about it or not. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I can get pretty emotional at times. I can get joyed. I can get deep sorrow. I, I cry every now and then. But just because I had emotion, an emotional reaction to something does not mean that that something is in fact true. And what people have done is that they've laid, they've, they've chosen these church services that give them a high or a feeling of some kind, and they equate that higher than the knowledge of God. They say it's experience more than it is doctrine. Well, that, to me, is an excuse for not believing the doctrine of the Bible. You got an experience, so therefore it must be a God. It felt right. It felt good. I had to, I had to, somebody I'd known most of my life, grew up with in this church, they started going to a, a church where they laid hands on everybody and everybody passed out and were slain in the spirit and they got tongues. And, and I, I knew this person wasn't raised that way. And I said, show me in the Bible that what you experienced was real. Show me that it's true. She said, I can't. I just felt it. I know it was, I know it was from God. It felt, it felt right. And I'm going, feelings are not it. It's not how we feel about something that makes something right or wrong. People use their feelings to say that basically anything that they're doing is right. It makes morality subject to your emotional response to it. If it felt right, then it must be right, even if it's adultery. And that's what Kundalini does. It gives you an emotional high gives you a sort of a drunken experience, but it's Mystery Babylon the Great, and she's the one holding the cup. And God gave her that cup. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, the Bible says. And God is caught using Babylon and things like Kundalini. Kundalini actually shows up in church services because there's different ways of getting it. You can either meditate into it or... You can receive a shakti pot. A guru then could touch you on the forehead to administer the kundalini to you to where you receive it all at once without meditation. What does that sound like to you? Uh, but it's about the supposedly at the base of your spine where there is no spinal cord. No connection to the brain, the most high. At the base of your spinal cord is a coiled up serpent. And that serpent slithers, never makes a straight line because he can't. You never see a snake just straight as an arrow just go straight forward. You never see that. They don't do that. Their way, God designed it so that we understand that a serpent's way is always crooked. 
it's never straight, especially if it's a sidewinder. Sidewinders are the worst. But they go through the seven chakras, seven, seven energy vortexes, seven spirits, seven devils, seven unclean spirits is what that represents. Uh, according to, I think, the Wikipedia article, the yogi reverses the searchlights of intelligence, mind and life force inward through a secret astral passage. In other words, in, in, instead of you looking like to the Bible for intelligence and life, you look inward. Instead of you looking up for God, you look inward for God. Through a secret astral passage, the coiled way of the kundalini and the coccygeal plexus, which is the sacrum. Sacrum means holy place. And upward through the sacral, the lumbar, and the higher dorsal, cervical, and medullary plexus, and the spiritual eye at the point between the eyebrows to finally reveal the soul's presence in the highest center of the brain. It's about activating the pineal gland to give you an awakening. But activating the pineal gland makes you go to sleep. You see the opposite? Isaiah 27. Notice this verse. And that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword, which is what? The word of God. Somebody say amen. By the way, the word of God is great. The word of God is sore. The word of God is strong. Shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. What does he pierce with? His mouth. Where does the venom come from? His mouth. God designed it that way. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Isaiah 59, 8, the way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. Um, they have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. And the crooked path, in this case, relates to the serpent rising up the 33 bones of your spine in a crooked path. He doesn't go straight. He goes crooked. And God said, Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Lamentations 3.9, He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone, and hath made my paths crooked. Think of uh, a labyrinth prayer walk. Some churches, some, some universities, some seminaries will have a, a prayer labyrinth, which is a crooked path for you to go to the center where God is. But that's not where God is. That's where a, a, a minotaur is. Half human, half beast. Trapped in the core of the earth. Get it? A half beast, half man. Trapped at the core of the earth. And he wants you to go down there to release him. To let him out. Maybe this is what Joyce Myers means when she says you must release God with your faith-filled words. God's bound up. God's in chains. And God wants to heal you, but he can't because you haven't released him to with your faith-filled words. Baloney is what that is. Witchcraft is what it is. Philippians 2.15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world something that that makes us the stars of heaven that's what god said of israel he told abraham i'll make thy seed as the stars of heaven and here that's what paul is saying as sons of god we shine as lights in the world in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And that's the people of this world. That's the way of the, the way of the serpent is crooked. And the people that follow the way of the serpent, their ways are what? 
crooked. Crooked. That's where we get the word crook from. A crook is crooked. So are some judges. So are some politicians, elected officials, government bureaucrats who want to pass a, a bill so that a certain country or a certain institution receives, you know, $2.3 billion in aid, knowing full well that if they get that passed, that some of that money is going to come back to them through their <clears throat> charitable foundation, like the Clinton Foundation. Just recently, a pair of uh, forensic, I don't know that they, they would like the term accountants, but that's pretty much what they are. They're bean counters. A couple of forensic bean counters went through the Clinton Foundation's expenses and their income and wrote a report because apparently the IRS has a program, a whistleblower program, that if you turn a, a, an organization in for tax fraud and if the IRS finds out that they actually committed tax fraud, whoever turned them in gets a reward for it. So there's a couple guys from Connecticut or someplace. They've got a New England accent. There's no doubt about it. They went in digging into the Clinton Foundation. Clinton Foundation is a slush. But Clinton Foundation started out as a 501c3 charitable organization to build the Clinton Library. That's what they declared to the IRS. Was they were going to build a library. The library has been built. But then the Clintons now have been taking in all this cash for years. And they testified before Congress recently, and one of the senators asked them, can I ask you this question? Since the Clintons have not been in political power or any political office, have you seen their amount of income significantly drop? And the two guys said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Since they haven't been in power, because they have New England accents, since they haven't been in power, um, their income has dramatically dropped. Why? Because while Mrs. Clinton was Secretary of State, she was selling U.S. foreign policy out to the highest bidder. Whoever would promise to give back to the Clinton Foundation X amount of dollars, she would then promise that their country would receive such, so much money from U.S. loans. Loans that never have to be repaid, by the way. So then Iran gets a big thing full of money, but they don't get all the money that was sent to Iran. Not all of the money that was supposed to go to Iran back when Obama was off office, not all of that money went to Iran. It went to other places. Then it got funneled back. Look up politicians who have, quote-unquote, foundations. There's the Clinton Foundation, the Pelosi Foundation, the McCain Foundation, the Biden Foundation. It's amazing, isn't it? Their ways are crooked, not straight. When Jesus comes... He's going to make all the crooked paths straight. Somebody say amen. Now, this was just, this is the World Health Organization. The president came out the other day and he said, we're going to stop funding the World Health Organization because we believe they're, they're in bed with China on this virus thing. Everything that they've said is wrong. China is covering up the number of people that died in China because of this virus. China is covering up the source of this virus, and we don't trust the World Health Organization because it's a front for the Chinese Communist Party. Amen! The World Health Organization wants Bill Gates' plan to vaccine everybody, and then the digital ID. 
Now, I don't, again, I don't believe the digital ID necessarily is the mark of the beast. It could be like the great, 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 great grandfather of it. Maybe one step toward it. I don't think that's it. But we're getting close. So the World Health Organization and China have enjoyed. This is the head of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adham Ghebreyesus. World Health Organization and China have enjoyed a long and productive partnership. World Health Organization is proud to have supported the overseas training of more than 2,000 Chinese health workers, grateful for China's commitment to strengthening health systems in other countries through its Belt and Road Initiative. Meanwhile, look at El Presidente smiling like a Cheshire cat in the background. He sends the uh, Surgeon General out, Jerome Adams, um, to basically tell the world, uh, we're not funding them anymore. In a stunning turning of events, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams has effectively dumped the Bill Gates, CDC, World Health Organization predictive contagion model and is now working with the real data. Because that model, you may have heard me say this, when all this thing first came up, they started talking about the coronavirus and a representative from emergency management services of the St. Louis area went on the local St. Louis Fox affiliate on a Sunday morning news program and said, we predict as many as 10,000 people in the St. Louis area alone are going to die from the coronavirus. And I said that morning, I said, that was ridiculous to say that. 10,000 people died of this uh, that's going to die. You know what the total is now for St. Louis? For the St. Louis area? I think it's way, 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 way close to that. I think it's like, um, let me look up the number here. Let me go on the local news app. Let's see here. Uh, click home here. Um... Let's see here. They've issued another stay-at-home order in St. Louis County. Okay, here we go. Number of deaths in the St. Louis area. Why won't it bring it up? 743. Which is not 10,000. And it's not going to be 10,000. Because she said 1.4 million people in the St. Louis area were going to get the virus. Actually, that's just the number of cases. The number of deaths is in the 200s. So instead of 1.4 million people getting the coronavirus... In St. Louis City, only 743 have and just over 200 deaths. Now, I'm not belittling those deaths in any way. I'm just saying the World Health Organization and the Gates Foundation, I think, are the ones who pumped up those numbers. Now, just so it's I'm understood... If I were to say that I'm against vaccines, I would be lying. My first time going to Kenya, I ended up with about a half a dozen shots before I left. I had to do it. Okay. My wife has me line up, get a flu shot every year. I'm not dead. I don't have the mark of the beast in me. Nothing nefarious has happened whatsoever. Vaccines in and of themselves are not necessarily some evil thing. Nor does receiving a vaccine cause you to lose your salvation. I don't, I don't believe that line of nonsense. 
Now, does that mean they're healthy for everybody? No, obviously not. And again, it's one of those things, it depends on who you are, your health background, so on. Having said that, however, all of a sudden, Bill Gates leaves Microsoft so he can focus on, and he does this right at the very beginning of the coronavirus issue. He leaves Microsoft to devote himself full time to his philanthropic work, which is vaccinating the world. And he and his foundation are pushing a vaccine for the coronavirus. Now, I also don't believe that Bill Gates is trying to come up with a virus that's going to kill everybody. I don't believe that. And for those of you who insist that he is and that that's the game that Satan is playing, I'm asking you to show me in the scriptures where Satan has a massive depopulation program in hand. Let me remind you who ends up slaughtering a large number of people in the, on this earth in the end times. Let me remind you who does that. God. Not Satan. God does. God is the one who sends the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the vials of wrath, and they end up killing millions of people. God does that. Not Bill Gates. Think Bible. Okay? Think Bible. Now, I, again, I don't like Bill Gates. I don't like what he stands for. He's an abortionist. And in that sense, yes, he wants to drastically reduce the population of the earth through abortion. But not vaccines. And I know I'm not going to convince everybody, so I'm not going to try. But anyway, we have the Surgeon General we're rejecting the World Health Organization, CDC, and the Gates Foundation. I guarantee you, if this had been Obama's Surgeon General, would have been saying, well, we're helpless. We don't know what to do. We need a vaccine to, to cure everybody. And Trump and the Surgeon General are saying, we don't need the Gates vaccine. We've got hydrochloroquine. Why don't we give that out instead of vaccinating everybody? Uh, the U.S. Surgeon General stated, uh, let me continue reading this. Uh, they dumped the Bill Gates, CDC, World Health Organization predictive contagion model and is now working with real data. This is unbelievable news, and it is sticking a needle in the overflated, out-and-out -out fear mongering balloon that Fauci and Bill Gates have been falsely inflating and propagating. The U.S. Surgeon General stated, what the American people need to know now is that we actually have data, and so we are tracking that data. According to the U.S. Surgeon General, the new data suggests that businesses will begin to reopen as early as May. And you see, you understand, the liberal Democrats do not want this virus to get better. They do not want the people to get better. Why? They're wanting to use this terrible virus as a means of setting up a massive voter cheating scam in November. Remember, we were told all through 2016 that Hillary was going to win this election. All the polls had her by three points. She was going to win. Nancy Pelosi herself gets on this. It's 100% guaranteed Bill, uh, 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 Donald Trump will not be president. 100% guaranteed he will not be president of this country. 100% guaranteed, she said. Then we found out on election night that all of the polls were lying, all the mainstream media news were lying, everybody was lying through their teeth. Trump was never expected to win. They thought they had the fix in. And now they're trying to fix 
this election with ballot harvesting. Let me explain what that is. Instead of you going to a polling place, you showing an ID, which I have to do, where I vote, they ask for proof that I am who I am. So I have to bring like an electric bill, show them I live at such and such house, or have to show them my photo ID. Then I'm allowed to vote. What they want is, they want ballot, har ballot harvesting is a Democratic Party operative goes into neighborhoods knocking on doors saying, how many people of voter age live in this house? And you can make up any number you want. Oh, you say 20 people live in this house? So here's 20 ballots. Make sure all the people fill out those ballots. And, and, and they target certain neighborhoods because they know they're going to vote liberal. Then they collect the 20 ballots from this one house because they said 20 people lived here. And it's racist to ask them for an ID, even though it's not racist to ask them for an ID if they want to buy cigarettes or if they want to buy alcohol or if they want to get onto a plane. Or if they want to donate blood or if they want to check into a hotel. It's not racist to ask somebody for their ID on any other. If they want to adopt a pet, they have to show an ID. It's not racist then, but it's racist if you ask them to show an ID for the, when they come up to vote. Why is that racist? Why is that racist to ask for an ID to make sure that you are a eligible voter and that you have registered as an eligible voter to make sure that you are an American citizen? Why is that racist? It's not. So they either want ballot harvesting or they want mail-in, which is basically the same as ballot harvesting. Because you could say, well, I've got 35 people that live in our house and they're all voting age and they're all legal citizens by the way well how can we be sure well i know them oh as long as you know them that's fine so send in 35 votes from one household they mean to cheat on this election why might have something to do with what attorney general barr and john durham the inspector general is doing right this minute, right this minute, indictments, grand jury indictments against James Comey, against Andrew McCabe, against Peter Strzok, against Lisa Page, against... Um, um, who's the guy running the C that ran the CIA under Obama? Because every one of those people falsified evidence to get the, get this, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, a court set up to surveil and give intelligence on foreign operatives working in this country. They used the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to spy on Donald Trump before the election and after he became president to spy on him. Remember when Trump came out and said, Ob I just found out that Obama bugged Trump Towers? He wasn't kidding. And Barr and Durham right now are working on the indictments for these key players who illegally spied on as many as 45 American citizens, including the President of the United States. Which is illegal. And these people are going to be charged with crimes for what they've done. They don't want Trump winning another election. So they want people, they want this virus to get worse and worse and worse. They want more people to die, not less. I'm telling you, liberals are not about life. They are about murder and death. Now, did you happen to notice 
what was standing on the desk there at that meeting between the Chinese Communist Party and the World Health Organization that, what's his name, tweeted. He's the one that tweeted the picture. This was back uh, January 16th of last year. The World Health Organization meeting with not the Chinese people, the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is pure evil. Pure evil. I mean, ask yourself this question. Where does a majority of our pharmaceutical compounds come from? You want to take a guess? As much as 90% of our compounds that we use to make pharmaceutical medicines in this country come from China. Why? Why? Why can't we make our own? We can. It's just that the last, oh, I don't know, 10 to 20 years, we've been sold out to China by politicians. China has reached her tentacles into banks in this country, politicians' pockets in this country, educational institutions in this country. They own large plots of land, so much so that the state of Missouri actually, it's illegal. If you don't actually live in the state of Missouri and you don't, you're not actually a citizen of the United States of America, there's, there's only so much land you can own in the state of Missouri for farming because they don't want China buying up all the farms in Missouri. Because that's what they'll do. We were, we were on a road to China owning this country. You remember going all the way back to the Bill Clinton days. You remember when Bill Clinton was supposedly in bed with uh, this Chinese company? During the Clinton administration, Clinton had the EPA pass a, a regulation saying that only a certain type of clean burning coal could be used in power plants in the United States of America. And at the time, there was only two primary sources for that kind of coal. One of them was in the United States. One of them was in, guess where? China. Lo and behold, a frog was discovered or some grasshopper or some bird's nest was discovered near where this clean burning coal was in America. So all of a sudden, that's now designated as protected wildlife area, so it can't be touched. So the EPA passes this regulation saying only this kind of coal can be used to burn in our power plants, and the only place now we can get it is China. You see how it works? You remember, you remember the, um, the rancher out in Nevada that had grazing rights to this land? Remember that thing? And everybody, all these patriots started showing up with semi-automatic weapons to defend this guy's grazing rights? Who was trying to take those rights away? Senator Harry Reid. Why was he trying to take those rights away? Because he had promised that land to a company in China. So notice that their God is, I mean, why, this is a political meeting. Why do you need a God there? Why does Shiva have to be at this meeting? That's who that is. This is from Encyclopedia Britannica. Shiva is represented in a variety of forms in a Pacific mood where he is pacifying, a pacifying spirit with his consort Parvati and son Skanda, or as the cosmic dancer, not a Raja, as a naked ascetic. An ascetic is, is like someone who believes that if you starve yourself, let all your hair grow, never take a bath, eat three grains of rice a day, drink two tablespoons of water a day, that that will lead you to to a state of enlightenment. Okay, that's what an ascetic is. 
as a medicant beggar, as a yogi, as a Dalit, or an untouchable, accompanied by a dog, and as the, watch this now, the androgynous union of Sheba and his consort. Ba, ba, ba. Half male, half female in one body. See it? That's Baphomet. That's, that's Baphomet. Male and female in the same body. Crazy. Uh, let's see here. By the way, 5, 10, I'm counting fingers, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 50 fingers and toes. Um, he is both the great ascetic and the master of fertility. He is the master of both poison and medicine through his ambivalent power over snakes. Shiva is related to the serpents. As lord of cattle, what does that make him? He is a benevolent herdsman or at times a merciless slaughterer of the beasts that are human souls in his care. Look at this. He is the master of poison and medicine. And in today's world, sometimes it's hard to figure out which is which. Now, again, I'm not knocking all medicines. I'm not knocking all vaccines. I would be a hypocrite if I said that. There are certain medicines, I, there's a medicine that my insurance company won't pay for that I have to take or my face just gets red hot. So my insurance company won't pay for it, so I have to pay for it out of pocket. Thank you to those of you who have given for that. I didn't ask for that, but I pre I, I've made this... I got one bottle filled, supposed to last me a month. I've made it last two months so far. But obviously, some medicines are purely for profit. Some medicines are purely not good for you. And I, I don't necessarily believe that all doctors are in on it. That would be ridiculous to say that. But I can also see pharmaceutical companies not wanting to necessarily cure some diseases. To just treat those diseases would be better because then you're taking medicine long term. It's sort of like the, the idea of why churches don't use hymn books anymore. Because the publishing companies figured out, well, we can sell a church 100 hymn books every 20 years, or we can sell them brand new songs every three months and make a lot more money. So that's what they started doing. That's why you go to these churches now, and they, put the, they don't have the hymn books. They put these lyrics to these songs that nobody knows up on the screen, you're supposed to stand there and read the words like you know the song, but you don't. Because every three months, they're going to change those songs out and bring in some new songs in. Because they're on a subscription service with a publishing company. You get it now? So yes, I do believe that there are some pharmaceutical companies who decided a long time ago it's more profitable to treat diseases than it is to cure them. Now, I don't, I also, having said that, I don't believe that there's a cure for every disease out there. You have to understand, sin is at the core of our health problems, not pharmaceutical companies. And weed is not the cure all that everybody says it is. But Shiva, 
standing over the World Health Organization and his, his, her serpents. That's very telling. There's Shiva casting. And by the way, the, the ring around Shiva is flames. Where is Shiva? According to that image, where is Shiva right now? Surrounded by flames. Where is that? Heart of the earth. So what is Shiva? Shiva is called the destroyer. Well, that makes Shiva a Baton and a Pollyon. By the way, this statue is at CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. It's about opening up a portal. Remember that? Remember when Newsweek put out that image of Obama as Shiva? Are you kidding me? Never was an image more. A picture paints a thousand words. Here's from Wikipedia the comparison between Shiva and a bull. The similarities between the iconography and theologies of Shiva with Greek and European deities have led to proposals for an Indo-European link for Shiva or lateral exchanges with an ancient cultural, ancient Central Asian cultures. His contrasting aspects, such as being terrifying or blissful, depending on the situation, or similar to, are similar to those of the Greek god Dionysus. Dionysus was also an androgynous god. So was Bacchus who were gods of wine and partying, as are their iconic associations with bull, snakes, anger, bravery, dancing, and carefree life. The ancient Greek texts of the time of Alexander the Great called Shiva as the Indian Dionysus, or alternatively, or alternatively called Dionysus, god of the Orient. Similarly, the use of phallic symbols as an icon for Shiva is also found uh, for Irish, Nordic, Greek, and Roman deities, as was the idea of an, an iconic column linking heaven and earth among early Indo-Aryan states, Roger Woodward. I don't know who Roger is. But Shiva started out being a calf. Psalm 106, 19, they made a calf in Horeb and worshiped the molten image. Thus, they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. By the way, when you get into, if, you, if you're going to turn yourself over to the Hebrew roots, here's what you can look forward to. You can look forward to them teaching you that every Hebrew letter was an ancient symbol for something. And that Aleph is a symbol of an ox. An ox then represents God. They say the Aleph represents God because it looks like an ox. Really? The Jews came up with that, right? Where did they get that from? They got it from Egypt. Because that's what they said. When that molten calf came out, Aaron said, These be thy gods, Israel, that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Bull. Bull. I say. Isaiah 14, 29. Rejoice not thou whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth the cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. The people that were partakers of that fiery flying serpent that Stephen Greer photographed, it's, the, it's not... It, it doesn't cause them to turn away from God. They've already turned away from God. The fruit of their turning away from God is the fiery flying serpent. The result. Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He's talking about us Gentiles. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning, 
burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. There's two things in here. Number one, God said, I will spend my arrows upon them. I have a picture of that. I have a picture of that. I'll show it to you in a minute. Then the poison of the serpents of dust. So think of that virus. And here's what I learned today. See these little knobs on the virus there? Those little triangles? You know what those are? They're keys. They're keys. Here's the human cell, like lung tissue. And on the human cell, you had the these what they called ACE2 receptors. This is the lock. What it unlocks is entrance into the human cell. So, you know how some viruses affect animals, but they don't affect humans. This is the, the big mystery now with the COVID virus. Did it really come from humans consuming bats in the seafood markets, the wet markets they call it, in Wuhan, China? Bats who were carrying this COVID, this uh, Novel Corona 33 virus. And then that virus once being consumed by the people who are eating the bats just happened to have the exact shape that they needed to fit into the lock of the ACE2 receptor in the human cell. In other words, there are some viruses that animals get that humans don't get. We don't get anthrax. Not unless it's been modified. Okay? And there's the reason being is that the anthrax, whatever, doesn't have the right key to open up the human cell. It can't get in the cell to destroy it. And if it can't get in, then our antibodies just destroy it and it's done with. So how is it that this virus that they said is in bats ended up, you know, the Chinese telecommunications companies closed out over 21 million cell phone accounts in Wuhan, China since January. Either 21 million people in Wuhan, China lost their cell phones or 21 million people died in Wuhan, China. What do you think? So the COVID-19, or excuse me, the Novell Coronavirus 33 just happens to have the exact key that it needs to get in to the human cell. Revelation 9, think about it. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Who's down in there? Shiva. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose the smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Now, remember this. Remember when I said, I was 
actually just was before the virus. I did something on February 2nd about the number 33, and then the virus showed up. And then I was showing you the connections between the virus and the number 33. January 15th, the patient who becomes the first confirmed U.S. case leaves Wuhan, China, and arrives in the United States carrying the coronavirus. January 15th. That is the exact same day that the articles of impeachment were delivered to the Senate. Remember... They rushed the hearings and the vote in the House of Representatives, the impeachment hearings. They rushed them. And then when they got the vote, they delayed carrying the vote over to the Senate for exactly 33 days. And the day that the articles of impeachment were delivered to the Senate is the exact same day that the very first case of the Corona 33 virus enters into the United States. Coincidence. Is it? I don't know. But it just seems odd. I mean, Jay Sekulow is the guy. He was one of, of, of President Trump's lawyers. And Jay Sekulow said, 33 days. 33 days. You waited. You waited 33 days. I mean, he kept saying it over and over. And I'm going, 33 days? Why 33 days? Delivered the exact same day. And who benefits? Remember, who doesn't want Donald Trump to be president? anymore. Some of the worst people that's ever run our country. Some of the most crooked serpents to ever be elected to public office or become government bureaucrats. They do not want this man to continue as president because he swore. Remember what he said to Hillary when Hillary said, I'd hate to think what the Justice Department would look like if you're president. And Trump said, it's because you'd be in jail. And everybody's going, woo, yeah, put her in jail. Well, guess what? They're working on it. They're working on it. And they don't want him to keep doing what he's doing. So, remember, this was the Novell Coronavirus 33, designated by the World Health Organization, with the statue of Shiva on the desk. And then all of these stories showed up. This is that one Saturday I got up and it said 33 states have declared state at least, at least 33 states meaning there's more. There's 35 or 36 of them, but we're going to say at least 33 has. And I kept asking, why that number? And then, then I started looking. Ten new cases detected, all linked to case number 33. And then 33 new coronavirus cases confirmed. I'm not going to show you all 60 slides like I did the, a few weeks ago, but remember it was on March 11th. Three times 11. That the World Health Organization, with a statue of Shiva sitting on the desk, declared that the novel coronavirus 33 was now a pandemic that's more than an event, less than an epidemic. I'm quite certain that there are some very evil people in this world that want this to be an epidemic. They want millions and millions of people to die over this. No doubt in my mind about it. A 
and and to those of you who, and again, I, I know I'm probably not going to win an argument with you, which is why I don't get into arguments with people. But I, I want you to think for a minute. Those of you who are worried to death that a vaccine is being developed to kill you. It's actually easier to let the virus kill you. I mean, what do you have to do to get vaccinated? You have to go and you have to roll your sleeve up and get the little alcohol swab on your shoulder and they have to stick a needle in and inject you with a vaccine that you say is going to kill you. What do you have to do to get a virus? Go to Walmart. I mean, if, if, if I was some evil overlord and I was looking to kill millions of people and depopulate the earth, I wouldn't use a vaccine. I would use a virus. Because with a vaccine, you got to force everybody to go get the vaccine. And once people started dropping dead, the rest of everybody's going, I'm not getting that vaccine. You don't kill people with a vaccine. You kill people with a virus. I'm just, I'm just asking you to think through some of your conspiracy theories. Now, are there organizations... Are, let me put it this way. Are there evil organizations that are all about a new world order? Yep. And this is one of them. The Society of Jesus, which is not the same Jesus. And their symbol, I mean, look. These are things that pierce, right? And then you have 16 straight sun rays and then 16 what kind? Crooked. Bah, bah, bah. And the sun god is in the middle of it, 33. Is there another organization that uses this same logo? Same logo, same number. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, they don't invite me to their meetings. I don't get their memos. I don't have a secret source. What I can do is read a symbol and ask a question. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to control the narrative in Hollywood, the mainstream media, by issuing propaganda every day to shape what people in this country think and the people in this country are standing up saying we don't we don't get treated this way hoorah to the state of michigan and all you patriots up there who drove up to lansing and said told the governor we're not gonna take it no we ain't gonna take it hoorah to you people let your voices be heard we're not some third world country where you just dictate to us what we're going to do. This is America. We have rights. 
We have freedoms guaranteed, not just by our Constitution, but given to us by our Creator. And only our Creator can take them away. And if God chooses to take them away, then God takes them away. But you're not taking them away. So it doesn't look to me like the Gates Foundation's gained a whole lot of ground lately. Okay? But look at the core of that number 33. It's 3 and 11. And this, I've made the point, these locust descriptions were number 1, Revelation 9, 7 through 10, the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. On their, heads, on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. On their, their faces were as the faces of men, and they had the hair as the hair of women. That's your androgyny. That's Shiva. That's Apollyon. That's Abaddon. That's Dionysus. That's Bacchus. Their teeth were as the teeth of lions. They had breastplates as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like in the scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Now, I don't know. I don't think that we're in the midst of the trumpet judgments. And we're just now figuring it out. Are you kidding me? Because I guarantee you. When God starts doing these things that are written in the book of Revelation, God's people are going to go, uh, yeah, this is that. But then Revelation 9, 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath is the name Apollyon. Apollo was named after that. And that's the 11th description of these locusts with the scorpion tails. And the tails pierce, just like the mouth of the serpents, and inject their poison. That's what a virus does. Once it pierces through and unlocks the cell, it injects its viral poison into it. Words in the form of DNA code. Two coiled serpents together inside of the cell to destroy that cell and destroy lung tissue. So Deuteronomy 32, 33, their wine is the poison of dragons, the cruel venom of ass, because that's literally what the word virus means, means poison, like from the sap of plants. So Donna is the one that brought this up. You, you Google this. Coronavirus, 77 Jacksonville, Jacksonville firefighters self-isolating after three tests positive for virus. Here's another one, 77 new coronavirus. Remember, that, remember how you can do this kind of reporting. On any given day, let's say yesterday there was five new cases, and today there's three new cases. So you can go back however many days it takes for you to say there are 77 new cases since a certain date. And you can do that every day now. Any given day, you can go back until you have the number 77. Or you can, if it turns out to be 79, you can say at least 77 new cases. But the number's got to be there. That's 7 times 11. 11 is the key here. Remember that. 11 is the key. Um, 77 new coronavirus cases reported in Sacramento County. 77 dead from coronavirus in Wisconsin. I record seven new deaths, 77 new coronavirus cases on Easter Sunday. The world's fastest supercomputer identified chemicals that could stop coronavirus from spreading, a crucial step toward treatment. So you look down here, the supercomputer identified 77 things. And you can, just, and you can do that all day long. Type in covid 77. And you'll find a ton of them. Now, take a look at this picture. This is from a Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind event in Japan. And Stephen Greer said, What you see in this picture are alien entities that appear 
as arrows coming out of these people or coming at these people. I went dun, dun, dun. There's a zoom in. And by the way, you see, like, at everybody's head, if you look behind them, it's pitch black. But underneath all of their arms, they've locked hands together. Notice there seems to be silhouettes in between these Japanese people doing this. They're, they're contacting familiar spirits is what they're doing. And Stephen Greer said that these alien entities appeared in two different forms. One, as arrows. Two, as hooded, robed entities. Both of those are in Scripture. Do you remember the familiar spirit that the woman at Endor conjured up when Saul went to see her, verse 13, be not afraid. This is what Saul said. What sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle. That's a robe with a hood on it, covered with a mantle. That's how these entities showed up here, covered in a mantle. He con they conjured up familiar spirits is what they did. The shapes of the arrows, look at that. Coming right, it, it looks like somebody just photoshopped these arrows in, but that's not what happened. I mean, you got to understand, these people at these CE5 events sit and conjure up devils. And now they're showing up on film. Psalm 11, for the lo, the wicked bend their bow and they make ready their arrow upon the string. Psalm 18, 14, yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Psalm 57, 4, my soul is among lions, and I even uh, I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions. Let them melt away as waters which run continually, which bent when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. Psalm 64, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, just like virus words. Um, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. That's to the wicked. Because he says, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Look at that nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Somebody say amen. Man is like to vanity, his days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Notice he's associating lightning and arrows together. Now, if we go back to these pictures, what did they look like? Dun, dun, dun. This, this Bible is right. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Proverbs 26, as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor. That's Stephen Greer. He is deceived because these devils made him believe that they brought him back to life. They made him believe that they are extraterrestrial entities that want to come and share with mankind all of their great technology. That if mankind would just follow Karen Carpenter as she sings, use your mind, think thoughts, thoughts become energy. Energy rolls out into the cosmos and calls us, so we, we want to be your friend. Hmm. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is a man that deceiveth his neighbor. Isaiah 5, he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. That's the north country. Behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. like Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. You know what that is, don't you? When they talk about the seven chakras, they describe them as energy wheels or energy vortexes. Their wheels are like a whirlwind and their arrows are sharp. People, this Bible said it. We should believe it. And now we've just seen that this Bible is real and it's right. And people like Greer and those that follow him will never understand this. It'd be a miracle for these people after they've had these experiences with these spirits. Be a miracle if anybody comes out of that and says, you know what? I'm just going to follow Jesus Christ. Um, Isaiah 7, 24, with arrows and with bows shall men come thither because all the land shall become briars and thorns. Remember what Paul said, in case you're having a problem with arrows being spirits, so are thorns, so are wheels. Because Paul said thorns were a messenger of Satan. Those are angels, people, evil angels. And he said they were thorns. Living thorns. Spirits come in all shapes and sizes. I'm trying to move on because I got something else I want to show you real quick. Stephen Greer produced a document during this documentary. He said he got it fr from the FBI, Freedom of Information Act, declassified. This document came out July 8th, 1947, right, af right after uh, Roswell. And notice that the document is called the Flying Roll. Where did they get that from? They got it from Zechariah 5. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits. Cubit is 18 inches, roughly. Mine is about 18 inches. And the breadth thereof, 10 cubits. So it's quite large. 
Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. So what is he saying? It doesn't matter if you steal or you just lie and swear. God says, I'm going to, because of your sins, I'm going to send a curse to this earth. So he says in verse 4, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. God said the flying roll is going to do that. Now this document... Here's what it says. This memorandum is respectfully addressed to certain scientists of distinction to important astronautical and military authorities, to a number of public officials, and to a few publications. The writer has little expectation that anything of import will be accomplished by this gesture. The mere fact that the data herein were obtained by so-called supernormal means is probably sufficient to ensure its disregard by nearly all the persons addressed. Nevertheless, it seems a public duty to make it available. The present writer has several university degrees and was formerly a university department head. A very serious situation may develop at any time with regard to the flying saucers. If one of those should be attacked, the attacking plane will almost certainly be destroyed. In the public mind, this might create near panic and international suspicion. The principal date concerning these craft is now at hand and must be offered, no matter how fantastic and unintelligible it may seem to minds not previously instructed in thinking of this type. He said part of the disc carry uh, crews, others are under remote control. Their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this planet. These visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. Now, let me read to you the rest of it. Part of the disc carry crews, but under, under remote control. Look at number four. They are not excarnate earth people. In other words, they're not humans born on some other planet, but come from their own world. They do not come from any planet, as we use this word, but from an etheric planet, which interpenetrates with our own and is not perceptible to us. What is he saying? That they've been here all along, just nobody knew what they were. And he said the bodies of the visitors and the craft also automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. He said the disks possess a type of radiant energy or ray which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the etheric at will and so simply disappear from our vision without trace. The term ether was a term used to apply to the cosmos. They speculated that outer space consisted of a mysterious substance they called the ether. If you've ever smelled or inhaled ether, you know, they use it to get engines started. They used to use it to put people to sleep before surgery. If you've ever smelled that, you, you kind of get what I'm talking about. And I want you to understand the word ether in relation to elemental magic. You have earth, air, fire, and water. When those four join together, they form the fifth element called ether or spirit. So the term ether is a reference to the spiritual realm. Look at Now read that. They re-enter the spiritual realm or the etheric at will and simply disappear from our vision without a trace. He's not wrong about that. 
The region from which they come is not the astral plane, but corresponds to the lokas or talas. Students of esoteric matters will understand these terms. Esoteric means secret society stuff. Now, I didn't know what those terms were. Now I do. Do you know what a loka is? In Buddhism, the lokas, a loka, is one of four distinct worlds. The Kama Loka, the world of sensuality in which humans, animals, and some devas reside. The Rupa Loka, the world of refined material existence. The Arupa Loka, the immaterial formless world in which beings to master formless meditative attainments reside. And then the Arahants, who have attained the highest goal of Nirvana, have unbound themselves from individual limited existence in any form and so on. And live in no loka whatsoever. Loka is a world or a dimension. Third dimension, fourth dimension. So getting back to that letter, he said the region they come from is a different dimension, a higher dimension. And he's using esoteric terminology to describe it. Then Atala. I had to look that one up. Now that I know what it is, get ready for this one. Atala is an idea in Hindu architecture. Do you remember these? These were called the Vimanas. The Vimanas in the Vedic literature were these flying ships that flew through the air. UFOs, chariots, spirit chariots, in other words. The talas are the different levels of these vimanas. Now, what does this look like to you? You have different levels, and they get smaller and smaller until you reach the top. What does that look like to you? Step pyramids. Now, I'm going to show you something, then i got to boogie out of here. It's going to blow your mind. Think Freemasonry. The idea of Freemasonry is you come to the Masonic Lodge blind. But you want to know the truth. You want to see the light. So you enter in the lodge and they blindfold you. They say you're blind. You need to be, you need to have your eyes opened. Remember Genesis 3? So you go for the, the blue lodge, the first three degrees. Once you've had your eyes somewhat opened, you can either go to the York Rite, which has 13 degrees, or the Scottish Rite, which has 33 degrees. And every degree or step or tala that you achieve, you achieve a higher understanding. And by the way, you're going upward to where the great architect is at the top, the all-seeing eye. So you understand this idea that every level that you're on puts you one step higher towards attaining perfection or attaining godhood or attaining to the heavens. Does that make sense? By the way, the 33 degrees of the Scottish Rite and the 13 degrees of the York Rite, add them together. It's 46. Which is the exact number of words that the devil spoke to Eve in the Garden of Eden in the King James Bible, Genesis chapter 3. And it's the exact number of words that they said in Genesis 11 when they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And then I remembered, when we send people into outer space, we don't just light one rocket because they realized that just one, one rocket 
would not get anybody out of Earth's gravity into orbit, much less to the moon. So they built all the rockets in stages. The first stage gets them up into the upper atmosphere. Once that has, but that is as far as it can take them. It can't take them any higher than that. Then they drop that. They light the second stage. If you listen, you go back and listen to the Apollo launches, they'll say, go for staging. So they drop that bottom part of the rocket because the fuel's gone. And then they light the second stage. And the second stage is able to take them up into beyond the Earth's atmosphere, the, um, the Kármán line, where the edge of the atmosphere is. Then they drop that and light the third stage. That puts them into orbit. The first stage and the second stage will never get them there. It has to be the third stage. The third stage, once it's lit, they use another stage to get them to the moon and then back to the earth. It's all about levels. It's all about staging. It's all about the talas. And man climbing up higher and higher and higher and higher till he becomes his own Lord, his own master, his own God. Interesting times we live in. Share your thoughts down below in the comments. I'd like to hear them. You're the reason why I do what I do. Lord bless you. I love you in everything. Whether you agree with everything I said today or not, I want you to go back to your Bible. Prove those things that I said that were wrong. Prove them to be wrong or right according to the Word of God.